Okay guys, Jonathan was out here for Jam Sports Hunter and the Jam Sports Show. How is it going? I am here for the 2015 Daytona 500 recap and what a 500 it was. We have a lot to get to and I'm going to try to make this a little quicker than I did in the, the uh, nationwide recap for last night because that took forever to upload. So, uh, let's get right to it. Of course, the uh, big stories coming in to the race where, of course, uh, Kurt Busch being suspended indefinitely on Friday. Regan Smith would take his place in a number 41 car, and Kyle Busch had the accident in the Nationwide Series, or in the Xfinity uh, race. I believe I called it Nationwide um, beginning of the video, too, but in the Xfinity race yesterday, and he sustained a broken left ankle and a broken right leg, so he's going to be out for some time. Matt Crafton uh, was in his, the number 18 machine for him. So, of course, those are the big stories coming into the race. Um, it was fairly calm for a good majority of it, to be honest. Uh, lap 18 was when we really had our first... Uh, of course, Jeff Gordon uh, started on the pole in what would be his final day 2500. So there's another story too. He would go on to lead the first lap and lead early a good majority of the race. He would go on to lead the most laps in the race. Lap 18 is when we had our first problem. Landon Castle, a huge uh, blow up engine, uh, blew up flames and everything. Landon Castle would be okay. Uh, we'd go back green at lap 25. Um, Lap 42, Tony Stewart would get loose and shoot up the track. Uh, Matt Kenseth would get some damage in that wreck as well. Tony Stewart did say that the accident was uh, his fault, so he did take the blame for that. We'd go back green at lap 46, and we'd stay green for quite a while. It would lead to uh, green flag pit stops, which were going to be the interesting thing here because, of course, NASCAR has their new uh, pit road uh, penalty monitoring system this year that's all computerized and so we'll probably see more penalties. I'm um, actually surprised that we saw as few as we did uh, today. The first penalty was for uh, Jimmy Johnson as the crew left the wall a little bit too soon. A good explanation on the Fox broadcast on how that rule works um, from their new rules expert Andy Petrie who of course was over at ESPN but went over to Fox after ESPN uh, lost the rights to NASCAR, and so also Carl Edwards in that cycle of green flag pit stops too got nailed for a speeding penalty. So not a good start uh, with his new team. Uh, Jeff Gordon was very very dominant, um, and for a good majority of the race. In fact, I will tell you uh, when you go through the running order how many laps he led. But uh, he was very dominant in the first half. Uh, but that was not a good sign for him and. Obviously, that showed that continued to not be a good sign. The last driver to uh, win the race at leading a halfway was back in 1992. Davey Allison did that, so definitely uh, been a while. Lap 106, there was a debris caution, and uh, Jeff Gordon would win the race off of pit road, and that would basically be it for his dominance. Gordon never really bounced back. We'd go back green with uh, 90 to go. Um, certainly not as dominant. For Jeff Gordon, I'm not sure uh, if it was just uh, not keeping up with changes, if it was adjustments. Um, not really quite sure what the problem with Jeff Gordon was, but for the second half of the race, he was nowhere near as dominant as he was in the first half. Uh, we had have green flag pit stops. It started at lap uh, 49, about is when uh, the first stops in this cycle happened, and. Not really much going on, pretty uneventful, and uh, it would stay that way for nine more laps. At about the time that the green flag pit stops had cycled through, Brad Keselowski would blow an engine, so uh, the second Ford to uh, blow an engine and second car to blow an engine in this race, Ryan Newman would actually get into the oil and would run into um, Jimmy McMurray, so that would basically put a damper on. Uh, both of their days as well. Cars would come in to top off at that point because they could go the distance. We'd go back green at lap 35. We talked about how Carl Edwards had the pit road penalty. He bounced back from that nicely. He would lead uh, with 24 to go. We'd have our third blow up. Again, another forward. Ryan Blaney in the uh, number 21 Wood Brothers car 
would blow up. We'd go back green with 19 to go. Dale Jr. would try to make a move early on in this uh, green flag run, and it would not go well for him as he would get stuck in the middle. And as you guys know, if you follow restricted play racing, in the middle is definitely not where you want to be. He was hung out to dry and fell back pretty far at that point. Fell back to about 15th or 16th he would bounce back. The racing that we saw, I cannot do it justice. There was about a 16 lap stretch, and even really uh, to the end, and during the green-white checker, the racing was just amazing, and if you couldn't get into that, then you're not a racing fan. There was uh, two to three wide. They did an amazing job not wrecking each other. Uh, a lot of close calls, but all they didn't was amazing. Three wide for the lead. It was just, it was good racing throughout the day, and that stretch right there was uh, definitely the best. Uh, Ty Dillon in the 33, who was making his first Daytona 500 start, would cut down a tire with uh, three laps to go. He would end up getting into the 51, so the 51 would smack into the wall, tear his car up, and they would bring out the red flag to clean up the mess and get the 51 off the track, which would, of course, bring us to the green-white checker. Uh, the red flag, by the way, was uh, seven minutes. And here is where things get a little bit controversial. If you look on social media and you look what people are posting, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. Austin Dillon will get into Jeff Gordon with, uh, we'll get into Jeff Gordon on the white flag lap, which as cars get closer to it, um, they would start to pile in. Now, there are a couple ways you can look at it. One, of course, NASCAR's green-white checker rule. Three attempts at a green-white checker, unless the leader takes the white flag. Once the leader takes the white flag, the next flag ends the race. Now, you can look at it that way and go, they need to change the rule and make sure that the race finishes and finishes under green. This is a point that I had made on Twitter, and a lot of people have made it too, um, after it happened, what's the point of having a green-white checker finish if you are not going to finish under green? Um, and another point that was made to was why didn't they just let them race back? Now, I, I know what the rule is, but as the cars were piling in, it was about, you know, the leaders would not have gotten in trouble. They wouldn't have hit anybody. They would have came back around uh and, and not hit anybody that was in the accident. So I, I kind of get the safety standpoint. But at the same time, you could uh, argue why didn't they let them race back. Or you could, like I said, argue what I think NASCAR needs to do and what a lot of people think NASCAR needs to do. ARCA gets it right. ARCA finishes. The ARCA uh, Remax Series finishes under green. NASCAR needs to take a look at the rule. They really do. Um, because... Fans pay good money, and they don't want to see races that un end under caution. Plus, if you do sit there for the whole race, as I did, you don't want to sit there for four hours in the bi in any race, but especially the biggest race of the year, have 199 laps count, and basically had the most important lap of the race, the last one, basically not matter. You're basically taking out the importance of it when you do that. So I think that is something that NASCAR definitely needs to take a look at. Uh, Joey Logano would have the lead when the caution would come out and would get his first Daytona 500 win, becoming the second youngest winner in the history at the age of 24. Um, so let's go through the... Uh, Finishing order right now. Landon Castle would finish 43rd. Another struggling. Day 2500 for Tony Stewart. He would finish 42nd. Brad Keselowski, 41st. J.J. Yaley, 40th. Uh, 39th, Ryan Blaney. 38th, Ryan Newman. 37th, Justin Allgaier. 36th, Mike Wallace. 35th, Matt Kenseth. 34th, Kyle Larson. 33rd, Jeff Gordon. After the accident on the last lap, he was running uh, in or near the uh, top 10th point of the accident, so not a great finish to what was a very dominating day for him um, to uh, start off the season and what would be his final day, 2,500. 87 laps is what Jeff Gordon led, and of course that was all in the first half of the race, basically. Uh, Reed Sorensen, 32nd. Michael McDowell, 31st. Trevor Bain would finish 30th. Ricky Senhouse Jr., 29th. Ty Dillon, 28th. Paul Menard, uh, 27th. And my computer's acting up, of course. 
26th, Bobby Labonte, 25th, Michael Waltrip, 24th, Carl Edwards, 23rd, Jamie McMurray, 22nd, Cole Witt, 20th, Danica Kirkpatrick, uh, 21st, Danica Kirkpatrick, 20th, A.J. Allmendinger, 19th, Matt Crafton, big shout out to him, first Sprint Cup Series start, and he finishes 19th on the lead lap, pretty good, filling in for Kyle Busch, and what was a last minute thing, um, and, you know, obviously finding out late last night that he would not, that Kyle Busch would not be able to go. Johnny Sauter, 18th. David Dragon, 17th. Regan Smith, good run for him, finishing 16th. And Kurt Busch's ride as he subs for him, as we mentioned earlier. Kurt Busch suspended uh, indefinitely on Friday. Eric Almarola, 15th. 14th, Austin Dillon, 13th. Mike Lynette, 12th. Sam Hornos Jr., 11th. David Gilliland, 10th. Greg Biffle, 9th. Casey Kane, 8th. Martin Truex Jr., 7th. Clint Boyer, 6th. Casey Mears, good run for him. Jimmy Johnson bounces back from the pit road penalty to finish 5th. Denny Hamlin, 4th, Dylan Hart Jr., 3rd, Kevin Hyrick, 2nd, and Joey Logano finishes 1st. So, uh, I'm not going to go over the points. Usually I would, but I'm not going to uh, right now because it's the first race of the year, so I will start that next week. Joey Logano, by the way, did have a pretty uh, dominating car, leading uh, 31 laps. In the 500, Dylan Hare Jr. by the way led 32. For those of you who are, uh, were interested, so uh, 3:24, three hours 24 minutes was the uh, time of the race. Uh, 12 leaders, 27 lead changes, uh, 37 were running at the end of the race. Seven cautions for 26 laps. So next up for the uh, Sprint Cup Series will be Atlanta. And that is next week, and the uh, Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 will be on Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Fox, so uh, be sure to check that out. I will have more coverage on what I did. Daytona, you know, normally I do entry lists and stuff uh, and starting lineups after qualifying. Daytona was just... It's just too difficult to do it because it's, it's too long and there's too much. So uh, that will start with Atlanta uh, next week. So looking forward to that. And but it was it was good racing today. And and even though I, I feel like it was kind of uh, dampered a little bit, if you will, by uh, the NASCAR green white checker. Well, it was good racing, and I still think it's going to be a, a good year. I think it's going to be uh, a fun year. So, like we said, Joey Logano gets the Sprint Cup Series win, his first Daytona 500 win, his uh, ninth career win overall in the uh, Sprint Cup Series. So, we're off to him, which should be another good year racing, and Joey Logano should be in the chase now with that win. So, of course, obviously wins um, become more important, and I think that makes things more fun. To be honest, I think the chase was about as fun as it could be last year. Looking forward to seeing how it goes uh, this year, and basically a lot of drivers say that the season now starts next week with the Atlanta race, with Daytona being a a thing of its own. Uh, The season and the hunt for the championship really starts next week. So, I will be back next week to cover that stuff. Don't forget to like the Jam Sports Show page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Links will be in the description. I do uh, tweet quite a bit during the races, so if you want to interact with me that way, go right ahead. And that is going to do it for me. I am Jonathan with that for Jam Sports 100 and the Jam Sports Show. And I will see you guys later.